We were expecting at the start of this year that March would bring a Fed rate cut, but it brought a BOJ rate hike instead. So yes, the BOJ exited the negative rate territory today and scrapped its yield curve control policy, but the Japanese yen's unexpected reaction is what surprised me and many others the most. So welcome. This is Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. And it just happened. The BOJ scrapped its negative rate policy, raised its rates from negative 0.10 to 0%. AOE 0% is not huge, but this is the BOJ's first rate hike in 17 years. So the bank also dished its yield curve control policy and ended the purchases of ETF and Japanese real estate investment trusts. So the bank said that it will still continue to purchase the Japanese sovereign bonds with broadly the same amount as before but they actually won't be obsessed by you know keeping the 10-year JGB yield below the 100 basis point mark. So all in all the surprise that we got from the Bank of Japan today could hardly be a more hawkish than this. Even the most hawkish investors were betting that the BOJ would at least keep its yield curve control policy in place. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, today officially marks the end of an era, the end of the negative rate era because well, the Bank of Japan was the last survivor of that post-global financial crisis policy to maintain the world economy's afloat. Now, I and you and many people were clearly expected to see the Japanese 10-year yield and also the Japanese yen rally on the back of such hockey shifts from the BOJ. But the contrary is just happening right now. The dollar yen spiked above the 150 level, the euro yen rallied past the 163 level and the 10-year GGP yield is down by almost three and a half percent at the time I'm talking here. So if this is a buy the rumor sell the fact reaction where buying the rumor got to the dollar yen only to 149 level before the BOJ's decision, well the yen is in trouble. Because what we see right now is rather the pricing of potentially one and done action from the Bank of Japan. Now note that the governor Ueda hasn't spoken just yet at the time I'm talking here, but if he doesn't come up and say that the BOJ will continue to hike the interest rates, well, the yen bulls will apparently not come back to the market. And there is a chance that well, he doesn't hint at robust rate hikes in Japan because well, the Bank of Japan simply said that they won't embark on an aggressive interest rate hike strategy and that the conditions in Japan will remain accommodative for the time being. So today's combo of rate and asset purchases decisions from the Bank of Japan was supposed to send the Japanese yen on a rising path. But at this point, I really don't see what would make along the Japanese yen the best trade of the year if all well, the yen bulls just can't move today. Elsewhere, all well, the Reserve Bank of Australia maintained its rates unchanged at today's monetary policy meeting as expected and the Aussie dollar fell sharply below its 200-day moving average level. The US dollar index, on the other hand, extended gains above its 50-day moving average and well, jumped above the downtrending channel top of, of February and March this year. The hawkish Federal Reserve expectations also sent the US two-year yield to 4.75% in the run-up to this week's Fed meeting. Now, FIMC starts its two-day monetary policy meeting today and they will be announcing their latest decisions tomorrow. Now, as we all know, they are not expected to change the interest rates at this week's meeting. Therefore, the dot plot is what will be mattering the most for the Fed watchers at this meeting. Now, something that only two month jump in monthly inflation won't derail the Fed's plans to cut its interest rates around three times this year. But on the other hand, an increasing number of people think that well, the Fed simply can't start cutting the interest rates when there is, well, no reason to do so because inflation is showing signs of heating up, economic growth in the US is above average, the US jobs market remains 
pretty healthy and well the corporate earnings in the US are quite robust as well so there is a chance that we actually will see the median forecast fall to two rate cuts this year from three plotted in the December meeting. Now, on the other hand, we will also be listening very carefully to the Fed's plans about its QT, the quantitative tightening, whether they will slow the unwinding of their balance sheet or they will not. I personally think that they would better not touch the QT so fast just to balance out the expensive fiscal stimulus that's going on into the November election because otherwise well, inflation in the US will hardly fade away. So in case we see a hawkish Federal Reserve this week, which we expect to see, well we will also likely see the US dollar and the US yields to trend higher. But what will happen to the S&P 500 remains quite unsure because the strength of the AI buzz will likely play an important role in determining whether the big cap rally should be carried higher in the US or it should not. Because yes, at yesterday's trading session, while the US yields and the US dollar were both rising, well, the S&P 500 was also rising led by technology stocks. The Nasdaq 100 also closed Monday's trading session 1% higher. Tesla gained more than 6% yesterday after the company announced a price hike for its model while in the US and in Europe. That will be effective from this Friday, mind you. So if you haven't you know, got your Tesla just yet, it's maybe time to do so. Elsewhere, Apple gained yesterday and Google jumped on news that, well, Apple considers integrating Google's Gemini AI into the iPhone. And when you think that, well, there are roughly 2 billion iPhones out there, well, Gemini's reach would simply get a decent boost if it teams up with Apple. For Apple, on the other hand, well, my feelings are quite mixed because having AI on iPhones will obviously be fun and uh, should boost the iPhone demand globally. But the fact that Apple is now looking to use a tool developed by Google is simply another confirmation that the company has missed the AI train and that's not necessarily good news for a technology giant like Apple well, that should navigate today's market conditions of AI or die. But anyway, for once the AI king Nvidia remained under the shadow at yesterday's trading session after the market closed, even after the company unveiled it is GTC conference that the BOFA analysts call the Woodstock of AI, by the way. It's new and faster chips that would better handle training and running of AI models. But in vain, Nvidia fell 1.77% in the after hours trading because, well, many said that if the brand new Blackwell chip didn't trigger a fresh rally in Nvidia, it's simply because the arrival of a new and a more powerful chip for AI was already priced in. But to me, if Nvidia bulls didn't take the opportunity to send the stock price higher after the unveiling of better chips, well, it's maybe because the rally is coming to an exhaustion into the $1,000 per share psychological mark. We'll see. But in energy, while well, US crude rallied past the $82 per barrel level on Monday's trading session, on news that Ukraine continued its drone attacks on Russian refineries. Now, the barrel of US crude flirted with the $83 per barrel level yesterday and is trading at around $82.5 per barrel level at the time I'm shooting this video. Geopolitical tensions and IAA's forecast that supply will be in deficit this year amid the extension of OPEC supply cuts remain supportive of the oil bull. So a sustainable rise above the $82 per barrel level should pave the way toward the $85 per barrel level. But the major short-term risk is a hawkish shift from the Fed that could eventually spoil the global demand expectations and limit the top side potential. So this is all for today. I'm Ipek Özkardeşköy and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. 
follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments and please do not forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow and until then, good day trading.